What is going on guys? It is a fine, fine, super fine day here in Southwest PA and in today's episode we are going to take a look at a brand new Kawasaki Ninja 650. But before we get into that, I do want to give a huge shout out to Joel and all the other staff here at Mosaites. They've given me a very interesting, unique opportunity to look and go over any motorcycle they have in their lineup so if there is something specific that you do want to see let me know in the comments and i will do my best to research that bike as best i can and to get a video out to you i think what i might do i might do the kawasaki's first maybe the ninjas first since i'm kind of biased to the ninja this this guys listen if you don't know who i am and you don't know the channel the ninja 650 is a fantastic motorcycle it was my first motorcycle and so far i have almost 20,000 miles on it and i got this bike about two years ago so it is a very fun bike to ride and it's not something that you will get quote unquote bored of anytime soon the power delivery the customization the technology the price the insurance everything on this motorcycle is really really awesome that's why the ninja 650 is pretty much kawasaki's champion middleweight champion it is a fantastic bike so speaking of the 650 class and what makes it a 650 it has a 649 liquid cold um, parallel twin engine four stroke this is the same exact engine that is in all kawasaki 650 lineup the versus 650 the z650 the uh, ninja 650 and the vulcan 650 yes all the same engine just different stylings and different just uh just different nuances like that but it's all the same engine and let me tell you guys it is a fantastic engine it comes in at 67 horsepower about 8,000 rpms and 49 uh, foot pounds of torque at about six seven six five thousand rpm um, it redlines at 10 and i think it goes all the way up to 12 so you're kind of in that mid mid uh mid range as far as torque and horsepower um but definitely has enough to get you where you need to go i live in pittsburgh so definitely in pittsburgh you want to have something a little bit more torquey which is exactly why i went with the 650 over the 400 nothing wrong with the ninja 400 i just needed something a little bit better and i wanted something that i knew that i wouldn't get bored of quote unquote bored of or outgrew in quite some time um, this, uh, I guess it's just to uh, continue going through this motorcycle. One of the great things about this bike in particular is the technology package that pretty much comes standard on all these bikes. ABS does not come standard unless they change that for the new year, but ABS does not come standard and you will pay a little bit more for that. If that's something you want, I say, go for it. Do you need it? That's your opinion. Um, it all depends on how you are with your riding and, and how comfortable you are. Uh, it comes with a slipper clutch, uh, a slipper clutch assist system. So pretty much what that means is the clutch is super easy to pull in. It's not hard. You can easily do it with one finger. And the slipper clutch is very nice technology for new riders because what it does is if you're riding this bike and you downshift a little too soon with the rpms up high that slipper clutch is going to prevent the rear wheel from catching and starting the slide on you so that is really really good technology to have standard on a 650 for a new rider and that's what makes this bike so approachable for so many people whenever you are just getting in to riding a motorcycle weight wise it's not a very heavy bike compared to other behemoths that i've got to ride um, it comes in at like 423 425 wet um, which might seem like a lot, but in, in all reality, it's really not. And it's just enough weight to give you a lot of confidence if you start riding in more hazardous riding conditions. In heavy wind, where you have all these fairings and you're going to get hit broadside, the bike is sturdy enough where you will get blown around. I'm not saying that you won't, but you feel a little bit more secure, a little bit more anchored, 
the uh, the 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 weight also does very nicely whenever you are riding in the rain, and it just feels a little bit more stable. So not a very big uh, not a very big heavy bike. Seat height is uh, about 31 inches. So let's see if we can just get on it real quick. Ugh. So as you can see, it's very easy to flat foot. Uh, if you can see my foot, you can't see my foot, but very easy bike flat foot the tank is a four gallon tank it does very nicely with hugging your legs whenever you are in the correct riding position i don't want to drop it but it just hugs your leg very nicely and it gives you a very stable riding position and you just feel very attuned and strong oh excuse me more on this motorcycle absolutely gorgeous bike i love the color uh they had an orange one here they sold it big sad really wanted to do that one but it is what it is uh you know the one of the things about this bike that i absolutely love that not a lot of people like is the exhaust system so a lot of people, whenever they get their bike, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, they always change the exhaust. It's the first thing they change. They say it sounds like a lawnmower. I don't personally hear it, but a lot of people say it does. But what's really nice about Kawasaki is they don't just do things just to do things. Uh, so when they designed this motorcycle and they put that uh, big freaking exhaust system on there were several reasons for that one of the first reasons is because it's low and tucked in and it gives you a nice visible line of this swing arm very unique swing arm not a lot of bikes are kind of designing it like that it's really aesthetically pleasing and when you have that exhaust kind of tucked in under the bike it really lets your eyes catch and just see the whole system of the whole motorcycle and it looks absolutely great i love it it looks fantastic the other reason why kawasaki put this big exhaust on it is because it actually dampens the vibrations this is a 650 or excuse me this well it is a 650 but this is a parallel twin engine parallel twin engines are notorious for vibrations i'm sure if you've been doing your research you've been kind of looking and you're like oh is the vibration going to be a thing i don't know is that worth it first off for the 650 it's not that bad it's really not that bad um but with that exhaust what it does is it helps absorb some of that vibration since it's so low right next to the engine it does a really good job of absorbing that extra vibration and i know that for a fact because i know a lot of people that change that one of the first things that they notice is that it becomes a little bit more vibrational in nature and you know that is just what it is that's what's going to happen again i'm not saying that it's a bad thing if you change your exhaust you know, I have my reasons. If you follow the channel, you know my reasons why I haven't changed my exhaust. But if you do change your exhaust, that is a pretty big possibility what's going to happen. Um, I don't know if it all depends on what kind of exhaust. I don't know if it depends on if you get a full system or, you know, a slip-on. Those are things you're going to have to kind of trial and error on yourself because I personally don't know. I haven't done that to mine. But that is another thing about the whole exhaust system on this bike is they do it in a way to absorb that vibration the other thing and this is probably one of the big reasons why i really really like the exhaust system on this bike is because it weighs a lot and you might be thinking well that's going to you know weigh down the bike blah 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 because it's so low and it's so centered it really makes the motorcycle stable it really centers in on that center of gravity on this machine so whenever you're in your turns and you're doing everything you're doing the bike feels solid the bike does not feel uh out of whack or unbalanced in any kind of way it it just does a very good job at letting you know you are on a very well well designed and uh built machine 
and that's really really nice especially for a new rider it doesn't feel unbalanced it doesn't feel wonky it doesn't feel any kind of way it just feels like a really really good bike as far as other technology with this bike if we go to the front the front has 300 millimeter dual disc pedal style discs and uh what kind of brakes is this NISF and I don't know how to pronounce it they're good brakes and the the pedal style does a really good job with grip and also with like heat disbursement so what's really nice about the 650 that a lot of its competitors don't do as far as uh, a middleweight champion is it does a really good job at not totally getting you cheap stuff um the, the the brakes are good can you get better brakes of course brimbos are better brakes but those are things that you can always get on at it if you really wanted to but the the brakes on this are fantastic i know from firsthand experience i've had several situations where i had to hit the brakes really hard you know i personally don't have abs on my bike so i kind of felt what happens whenever you go to that situation but the brakes on this bike are really, really good. Another thing that's really, really nice on this bike is the tires. The tires, these are Dunlop Road 2s. They are not bad tires. Did I pronounce that? Road Sport 2s, excuse me. These are really nice tires. Are they the best tires you can get? No. Are they the best, you know, sport tire or rain tire? No, but they are very, very, very good tires and you will feel very confident as confident as you can as a new rider uh, assuming you are a new rider getting this motorcycle you will have plenty of tire to do exactly what you want to do and you have the confidence in knowing that dunlop name and the dunlop tires in general are going to do a really really good job because they do you know you're not going to be leaning this bike over your first week of course not but it absolutely can if you had that skill set again kawasaki did a great job with not giving you just the cheapest of the cheap because it's an intro bike if you know that's arguable if it's actually an intro bike but the tires on this bike are really really good the rear is a single disc it's 200 and 220 millimeter same pedal style same same situation really good brakes again again my bike personally doesn't have abs but i had no problem whatsoever with my bike let's uh let's move the camera if we can and uh let's uh let's get get a look at the the front of the bike I don't know how this is going to look because I want to show you what is really nice about this bike and this is the lights. So you have your high, you have your regular lights, you have your high beams. I'm not sure if that is showing but it is a good break to, uh, excuse me, sorry I'm kind of watching this and I'm wondering why it's not, uh, not flashing but anyways the, the lights on this bike are uh, really nice. They are a very, very clean light. So what Kawasaki did, and I'm going to move this back. I'm probably going to be really mad at myself for moving that. I probably should have marked that too. What Kawasaki did was really, really nice for this bike is the lights. So again, they are LED lights, but what's really nice about them is they are a LED light but the color on them is a very natural color for your eyes to interpret things on the road. So what that means is if you're riding along and you see a log on the side of the road that's got a bunch of sticks and it kind of looks like it could be a deer or some kind of animal wanting to jump out on you, you will be able to recognize that because the lights and the light balance how they designed the lights on this are very easy for your eyes to see recognize and interpret what you are actually seeing without any kind of ambiguity or anything like that so that is a really really nice feature just give you a uh, another shot at the lights kind of what these look like 
So again, these are a really nice LED light that they have and it has been very successful time and time again for me. I really, really like this. I have ridden bikes that don't have these kind of lights and let me tell you, it really is a difference. Like there really is a difference. On the other side, you have your pass light, so you can go ahead and pass, and you have your high beams and low beams. Again, you can flick the passing if you are so blessed to be in a state that allows lane filtering um, and all that stuff. But that is one of the really nice things about the Ninja 650 is that light. The second thing, or whatever number this is, another really, really nice thing about this 650 is the TFT display. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start looking at that now. All right, guys, hopefully you can see this. Okay, this is another great thing that the Ninja 650 has is this really, really nice um, TFT display. You can change it actually by holding down the select or the down arrow. If you hold that down, that will change the screen from white to black. And also what I noticed with the 650 is Whenever you get into a really dark area or a really light area, it will actually change the brightness of the TFT display to make it a little bit better for you to see. Um, if we just kind of go through real quick what we have going on, sorry about that, going on what we have is you have a really nice gear indicator. Right now it shows that it's in neutral. You have this KTRC and it is on one that is Kawasaki traction control so basically that is Kawasaki's version of some kind of traction control where uh, Kawasaki where a level one which is where it's at gives you a lot more traction and a uh, level two gives you uh, excuse me gives you a little bit less traction so if you're feeling a little bit more bold and a little bit more sporty you can go ahead and you can change that if you want it has a really nice tachometer you can see it really nice up here you got a fuel gauge which actually it's crazy i didn't realize how uh <coughs> excuse me how important that is and how many bikes don't actually always have that, which I thought was kind of crazy. Um, odometer, just three miles on this. You have a thermostat for the engine right over here. You have your time and you have a couple of uh, things down here that we will show. So basically you can cycle through the top part and the bottom part. And we're doing that by this here. So the top button is messing and changing the top part of it. And the bottom button is going through the bottom. So if we cycle through the top, you have the odometer, which has three miles. You have trip A and trip B. And here's a little tip for new riders that I think is fantastic. It really helped me out a lot myself. And that is, if you are a new rider, it's really nice to set these trips for certain maintenance intervals for your bike. So for me, what I do, <clears throat> well, what I used to do, I used to have one trip for the uh, oil change, which I still do, and one trip for chain maintenance. Now I ride a lot, so my chain maintenance is very frequently, so I don't do that. I kind of just naturally know to do some chain maintenance every like three or four days whatever it is and the uh the other one that you can do which is what i do on mine is i set the other one for when i get new tires so i kind of have an idea of when i'm putting new tires on my bike and that is the top part of your tft the bottom is your average miles per gallon um and you can change that to liters if you're uh, liters per kilometer if you're on the other side uh, of the lake but if not you can do miles per gallon and uh, i can tell you with mine i am averaging about 54 miles per gallon again this is about a, this is a four gallon tank you have a fuel range which is 
really accurate for the most part. Um, you know, as you get your bike and you start figuring how things work, you will see that, um, you know, how you ride uh, obviously hugely impacts that. You also have your average speed and your total time. And total time is an interesting one that I like to keep track on mine. I almost have a thousand hours on mine, but what you have to remember with this is it only goes up to 99 hours and 59 minutes. So you have to cycle that every single time if that's what you're gonna do, if you wanna keep uh, track of your, um, if you wanna keep track of how many hours. You have a battery life, which, or a, a, a battery indicator which tells you how many volts you have, which is really nice. Whenever you start adding things like this right here, we will talk about that here in one second. And again, there you go. So you can also navigate this again by holding these two buttons in, and this will give you another display, which you cycle using the, uh, or excuse me, no, you don't. You cycle by using this button here so all your vehicle settings your display your clock bluetooth all that stuff and if you want to hit one of them you just hit that so let's say you want to change this which is a big thing people want to change after or they wonder uh, about and that is your shift uh, lamp and your engine speed so pretty much when you first get the bike it's going to be in uh you have 500 miles in your break-in period and the bike tachometer is going to flash at very low rpms you can actually change that um by going into this oh will it let me it might not even let me i don't want to just mess with stuff but you can change that where you want your rpms to change just by messing with that let's try that one more time because that is actually a really nice thing to do maybe it's under display i don't think so no so that's your brightness but you can uh you can kind of change oh excuse me a lot of things on this bike let's try this one more time i don't want to spend too much time on it uh vehicle settings let's hit this let's go yeah, I'm not sure. It probably won't let you change that because it is under 500 miles. I would not be surprised uh, in one aspect or another if that's what was going on with that. So a beautiful TFT display. Okay, so something else that is really, really nice about the Ninja 650. And let's just, let's just kind of walk around now since we're not like glued to the... Uh, freaking tripod so you can get a better look at this bike one of the things that's really really awesome about this bike is it allows you to customize it and to really tailor what kind of motorcycle rider you want to be so I always suggest go on demo rides take an MSF course and figure out what kind of bike you want to ride I was hell bent on the uh, the Kawasaki Vulcan 650S. I rode a cruiser, and I'm like, absolutely not. It is not what I want, and I'm glad I made the decision to go with the Ninja 650. But what's really nice about this bike is it gives you the opportunity to customize it into a more sport bike or a more touring bike right so if you want to go more touring you can get luggage you can get a charging port so you can get an aftermarket uh, charging port goes right into the battery so you can charge your phone GPS any other kind of accessories like that if you want to go more sporty I'm sure you can change the handlebars, get something a little bit more clip on. It might make it a little bit weird because of the uh, the um, the foot pegs and their position. But even just the bike itself, how this bike is designed right now is nice and sporty because you got a flat tank for the most part. So you can tuck in to the bike if you really want to and still get that sports bike feel again or you can get luggage you can hook things up they got all kinds of hooks and all kinds of things 
to help you strap down luggage, tank bags, and all that stuff. Other really nice things about the Ninja 650, and there's a lot, so I do apologize if I'm kind of all over the place, is you can get a passenger on this bike. It is passenger friendly. It's not the biggest seat. It's probably not the most comfortable seat, but it is a passenger seat. And that is something that is, you know, kind of nice whenever you might be riding, uh, you know, two up or whatever. Another thing that I really like about the 650, and, you know, I'm probably liking the weird things that nobody likes, but it's the whale tail. This thing right here, a lot of people hate it, a lot of people say it's ugly, but let me tell you this, whenever you ride this bike in not necessarily the rain, because you're going to get wet regardless, but if you ride this bike in wet conditions, that helps so much keep you dry. Like, I mean, you figure the bike's moving, things are splattering up, it does a really nice job of keeping your back nice and dry. And it's the little things like that that just make the bike so well designed. And I'll tell you another thing that is really awesome about the bike is the mirrors. And the mirrors are another thing that people kind of, you know, say are goofy. They do look a little goofy. Uh, I always thought it kind of looked like, uh, like bug ears or something. But what is really nice about the, the mirrors on this bike is they are fixed to the front of the bike they are not fixed to the handlebars so if you are tucking into the motorcycle you don't lose visibility i just did this a couple days ago i was on the interstate tucked in a little bit and i had full visibility outside of my mirrors and that is really really nice the mirrors also have a great wide range where you can see over your shoulders Having unique opportunities to do a lot of demo days, I was able to ride a lot of different bikes. And it's very interesting that not all bike mirrors are created the same. And a lot of bikes have really, really crappy mirrors. Ninja 650, they are great. They don't vibrate at all. You can see their arms are out far enough so you can see over your shoulder, which was another problem I was having with a lot of other bikes, not Kawasaki's, um, but other brands where you really couldn't see over your shoulder which was kind of annoying if i'm being completely honest but these mirrors worked really 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 well i mean all in all it has some of the basic things that a lot of motorcycles are going to have you have a peephole a glass window so you can see your oil oil changes on this motorcycle are really really easy i don't think i really got to show you the rear so this is the swing arm that I was telling you about. Just a beautiful swing arm. The exhaust, the big bulky exhaust that nobody seems to like is right there. It looks great. It works just fine. And you have a single rotor pedal style 220 millimeter uh, disc in the back. Plenty of stopping power with Dunlop, uh, Dunlop Road Sports 2s. And in the front... Again, just to kind of show you, dual disc, pedal style, 300 millimeter disc brakes in the front. They look good. They work great. And uh, yeah, you know, that's, that's pretty much it on this bike. This is the green one. I'll put the, uh, the exact name of it, but you have a really nice pattern, almost like a camo thing. My white one does the same thing. Again, really nice LED lights in the front and in the back. Let's go ahead and turn it on and put on our four ways. So you do have four ways on this bike as well. And uh, let's see, you got LEDs, turn signals, LED brake light. So much brighter than just regular bulbs and all that stuff. And also, you have them again in the front, built into the fairings. The lights, again, look really, really nice. Um, that's pretty much it as far as the, the 650. I hope that this video was informative, and I hope that it helped you out a little bit, at least with your uh, decision-making.
Again, as a quick recap, the Ninja 650 is the perfect middleweight champion. Kawasaki did a fantastic job designing this bike through and through. It's balanced, it's lightweight, it's got enough power to do everything you want it to do and to get you into trouble. Um, the, the bike is super comfortable with an upright body position. You are not bent over at all. I think that's a, a misconception with a lot of people whenever they're looking at this bike and they think, oh, it's a sports bike, you're going to be super hunched over. And if you have done your research, which I'm sure that you have, you will know that the Ninja 650 and the Ninja um, uh, ZXR are not the same motorcycle at all. It's not even the same ball game. If you don't know that and you're you know, contemplating getting a ZX6R, please do a little bit more research. That's all I'm going to say. They're not the same bike, but this bike is super upright, super uh, comfortable body position, just a, an overall great motorcycle. I'm not even going to lie. Again, I almost have 20,000 miles on mine, and I had it for two years so if you are interested in seeing more videos about this ninja 650 maybe not this one specific but the ninja 650 go ahead consider subscribing to my channel and looking through some of the videos regarding the 650 i have a 1000 review 15,000 review we're about to do a 20,000 review i think there's a 7,000 review and a there's like a bunch of reviews on the bike and you know so i do have a little bit of you know information to to share with this bike but i'm going to go ahead and get off i want to do one more walk around this bike again this is at mosides please check out the website if you are interested in this bike this bike is still here uh, as far as i know whenever this video gets uploaded the bike is still here so i will link in the description all their information so you can go ahead and look for yourself look at their huge inventory and if you need to get in contact with anybody feel free to go and get in contact with them again if you want to see any kind of specific motorcycle feel free to let me know in the comments and I will do research as best as I can so I can give you guys a good review. Again, I hope that this was informative. If it was informative, please consider dropping a like, subscribing, and all that fun stuff. And of course, as always, I will see you in the next one.